the Oak Ridge Boys. William Lee, he's the long bearded one. And uh, I love them guys. They sweet to my kids, I'll, uh, that's all I know. So, Richard Sturban, the bass singer. Joe, the tenor singer. And uh, who'd I miss? Oh, how can you miss the great Dwayne Allen, the, uh, the lead singer? So good morning, everybody. It is Monday, May 17th in the year of our Lord, 2021. We got Ken with us. We got Dwayne with us. And Stacy joining us for the first time. Hey, Stacy, can you talk or are you in a place where you can't talk? Have to unmute yourself if you do talk. Anyway, welcome in. And y'all don't forget, tomorrow is our 8 o'clock class on the Black Swan Hedge tomorrow, which is really, really going to be good. Now, the only problem is, it's at 8 o'clock, right? 8 Eastern. The only problem is I've not told Beth that I'm doing an evening class yet, which is probably a big mistake. And she's going to go, Bobby, that's time I put the kids to bed. I like, I have to, I don't know, I have to do something sweet for Beth today. She's out getting her hair did right now. That's the way we say it, but she's getting her hair did. So let me hide my uh, account number. So Thinkorswim won't call me and send me messages. Get on to me. I see how we're earning. I tried to get my spreadsheet up to date. Whew. I've been working on that for the last hour. So um, welcome in, everybody. Hope you had a great, great weekend. Ken, how was your weekend? Oh, it was busy. Uh, I'm one of these people that wait to the 11th hour, the 59th minute, and the 59th second to do his taxes. And that's what I did this weekend. Okay. So listen, y'all, let's talk about taxes for a second. I got to write a check for $5,700. I ain't happy today. Oh, no. <laughs> well, you, ought to, you ought to adopt you like five or six kids like I got, and then you'll never pay taxes again. It's really incredible. I, I did notice the difference when the daughter left the house. Yeah, it makes a difference, right? So right now, I'm doing good tax-wise because I got all the kids. But here's the problem. Everybody, I guess my family, never let anybody know that you're pretty good at taxes. Ever. That's a no shitter. Excuse me for my, pardon my French. Yeah, yeah, I'm good at taxes. I don't tell anybody. <laughs> well, the problem is I'm good at taxes, and I tell everybody. You know me. I can't just keep my mouth shut. So guess what? I'm spending my Sunday afternoon when I should be. We went to church for the first time since the pandemic was over, and I even parked in the guest parking place. I was so excited because I hadn't been there so long. I figured, you know. So. Everybody's like, oh, Bobby, uh, hey, taxes due tomorrow. Uh, can you help me with my taxes? And I can't say no. So look at this, y'all. This is just papers that people have handed me. Look, this is tax work. Taxes, here's somebody else's taxes. Here's somebody else's taxes. I've been working on taxes. That's what I've been doing today. My gosh, what am I doing? Never volunteer. And I got all this crap. So I'm doing everybody's taxes. What I owe you, Bobby? Oh, you don't owe me nothing. You know, so I just, I'm just stupid. All right, so you let's get. Tell, you should tell them you owe me two pounds of pulled pork. That should do it. Or something, right? You know, yeah. feed me. Keep me happy. Yeah. So, um, you know, we do what we do. And two, now that everybody's found out that I'm fully retired right now, they're like, oh, Bobby, you ain't got nothing else to do. You know, but feed your chickens and milk your goats. That's all you got to do. So got news uh, for you. Yeah. Your workflow will increase. By I told food. Beth, I said, I'm more stressed now that I'm fully retired. I said, oh my gosh, I got all this stuff, you know. And she's fussing at me because I told her I cook dinner every day. So I have basically because we've eaten out every day for dinner since I've re fully retired. So I'm, I'm keeping my promise, but it's just hard. I, you know, she's fussing on me. You told me you do this. And you told me you do that. So... Hey, look at this, y'all. So are you grace. telling us to send our taxes to you? Just send them. Next year? Matt, not, not next year. Hell, if you ain't got them this year, let's do them for midnight, baby. Oh, I've already done them. Okay. Uh, I'm saying let's just zoom it, baby. We'll just, you know. Like last night, one of my, uh, let's say, best cousin, yeah, she's having a party or something, and I'm on the phone with her like, okay, do you want me to e-file these? Or you want and she's like in the background like, and I'm like, I kind of need your attention right now. I'm doing your taxes for the name of God. 
Oh. Yeah, Matt, let's set up an appointment right now. Let's go ahead and put it on my, my calendar. Do you Bobby, this is how you fix it. Please tell me. Is because uh, I did this. I um, I could uh, people came to me for um, for, for advice on things all the time. I said, okay, hundred dollars, and I thought that'd make them go away. They so paid you hundred dollars, and so they paid me a hundred dollars gladly. And about a month later, more and more people started using my services. I go, well, I didn't. This was not my idea. I wanted them to go away. So I, uh, I thought, well, I guess I undervalued my self-worth. So I said, it's now $200. And then my business increased even more. Are you kidding? I'm not. I'm not. And then as consulting went on and the word got out, I kept going. I increased my rate to $360 an hour. And that's when the clients stabled off. Wow. And when I went to 500 an hour, they dropped off. And, uh, and for a long time, until I, until I had my heart surgery, I, uh, I was servicing 12 clients around the world, uh, down from about 70. And I was making all the money I wanted from them. Had them on retainer. They paid me $5,000 a year just, just to remember their phone number. And, uh, wow. and so, uh, and I, I mean, but I was hitting a, a niche market. Yeah, I mean, sure. uh, uh, is I, I did con consulting for, uh, a hedge fund guy in, in, uh, in Brussels, in, in Belgium and for a soybean concern in, in Brazil and, you know, people of that caliber, big time financing. Yeah. Cause I was doing long range forecasting and, uh, you know, uh, you know, like, and that, that's what the next, they paid me big money for it. So what I did was, is the trick was, I got rid of the, the small fry by just charging something. Remember, you're, 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 you're charging us for this session. And that's, you're giving us value and we're returning in kind. And if you don't do this, you have an imbalance of energy and you get resentful. And like right now you're fussing about taxes. Well, if you, they paid you, about 90 percent of them would go away and you wouldn't resent it at all you don't need the money but it's just what's fair can i need and, to book a session with you i feel like i need to lay back in the couch and just take the y'all will y'all give me two seconds to go downstairs and let my dog in i'm the only one here pork chop is with my mama and okay hope, give me some, i'm gonna, i got my underwear on so i'm gonna close the camera i'll be right back i'm gonna let the dang dog in y'all keep talking Ken, keep talking there about stupid dog get in the house <laughs> Oh, he's a trip, isn't he? Bobby is. That's Stacy. Hello, Stacy. She's I'm really looking forward to this black swan hedge thing tomorrow night. Uh, no kidding. I keep making, wishing today was Tuesday. And, you know, and well, uh, you know, we might get lucky if, if today's wish, a down day and tomorrow's a down day. And it might actually work out perfectly to put that on. Yeah. What y'all talking about? Black swan hedge. Oh, yeah. All right. The session tomorrow. I'm excited about the session tomorrow. As long as Beth don't shut us down. I don't think she will. I think she'll be able to be fine. I'm supposed to take her out for our, uh, Mother's Day this week just for me and her. So, that Is that supposed to be at 7 tomorrow? Uh, well, we were going to do 7, but you had to put the bed, babies to bed, so we moved it to 8. Okay. That'll be perfect. But I was Absolutely. telling Ken tomorrow might be, we might get lucky and that might be the optimal time to put it on. 
either tomorrow or Wednesday since the market is a little bit down today. Hey, and the cool thing is you can put them on, you know, after market, right? With futures and stuff, you can trade those, uh, you know, pretty much 24 hours a day. All right, so we're up $91.35 today. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Where's my music at? Dang it, where's my music? I say, y'all give me a second. I'm out of breath from coming up the stairs. Unbelievable. I don't have my Jefferson's music. I don't have jack squat, nothing. Uh, oh, well. All right, anyway, we know we're up on the day a little bit, so that's good. And our, now we're going to record our Greeks. I got to remember that Stacy's on here. Stacy, if you can't talk, you can always type in chat to let us know you're here. And hopefully this isn't too much culture shock. Stacy was a little worried about coming in. She says from listening to the videos on YouTube that it sounded like an all boys club. And we're not really not. I mean, we talk about sensitive issues as well. Plus, I'm on testosterone replacement therapy. So... And most of the time, well, we I'm, used to have a lady, but she do? she dropped us. She dropped us. I mean, just dropped us. And y'all well, know, I, I, I don't don't think that was because we were boys. I think she has some stuff going on. Her yeah, she's got stuff going on. You know. So we're positive deltas, y'all. Look at us, positive deltas, only twenty two point ninety nine. But look at this theta we got kicking, two fifty eight, two fifty eight or something. 258. All right. I like Elton John. Uh, Vega is positive. 50.61. All right. Let's see how we're doing across the board here. So, okay, we got a little chat type here. Let's see. Uh, thanks for letting me join the club. Absolutely. Stacey, I mean, we're here for you. This is a good group of folks, by the way. Most traders I found are a-holes. And it's good to have a group, you know, that is not here. And we, we're pretty good old folks. All right, so we're using, wow, we're only using 18,687 in buying power. This is great. Oh, and Stacy, we need to uh, set you up a one-on-one. -on -one. So we can get you started with your spreadsheet and all that. I had a really good, uh, so hell is uh, joining us now. I had a really good one-on-one -on -one with him. And anytime y'all want to do a one-on-one, -on -one, just let me know. And we'll get you set up. So look, it says that we don't need any adjustment in our buying power. So we're basically delta neutral. We're using 37% of our uh, buying power. Oh, we don't need a delta adjustment. Sorry. We're, Okay, on buying power. What I guess with the VIX where it is, we need to be about 30, what, five or so. So we're looking really, really good. So let's see what we've got going on today. So I would like to get a little bit more delta neutral, right? Or just have a few negative deltas. So how would I do that? Well, first thing I need to do is see what I got coming off today. So I'm gonna, I've grouped my, positions all together. So I've got hedges, income trades, a ton of butterflies. We've got calendars. We've all got all kind of stuff. So let's see how this calendar is doing. Oh my gosh, y'all. It's up 13%. That's normally when I close this puppy, right? That thing is done great. The SPX calendar. Look at that. It's up $525. So theoretically, I could... Uh, Close that, but if I did, that would give me a, a lot of positive delta, right? So no need to close it today. I've got a little other calendar. Let's see, calendar two. Calendar two, which is up a little bit, giving me negative deltas. All right, that's in XSP. What else we got here? Uh, all right, let's see my... Butterflies. What's my lowest butterfly? Butterfly 13. Is it still here? Nope, that's gone. Let's take it out. We'll remove you. There you go. All right, so butterfly 14 is gone too. Those are the two that expired. 
we'll delete that group. Those expired fully profitable on Friday. So that means my next butterfly is 15. Oh man, that one's gone too. Let's get rid of you. Delete. All right, so do I got a butterfly 16? Here we go. Look at this, y'all. It's up $25. When does this one expire? Today? No, I've got two days on it. Okay. So I must not have anything expiring today, huh? 15. What's butterfly 17? God, it's gone too. I've closed them all. Let's get rid of you. Looks like butterfly 18 is gone too. Let me just clear these out a little bit. Do a little maintenance. Delete. All right, so butterfly 16, we see it is on. Yep, yep, yep. So it's a scratch right now. Uh, I think I've got them all. Butterfly 16, 17, 19. Yeah, that's the one that's doing really good. When's that expire? Nine days. Okay. So everything looks pretty good, right? So really no need to... Uh, I don't see a really a need to close any. So what we'll probably do is put on a new one to get us a little bit of negative deltas. So here's our credit spreads. And I think, y'all, I think, I've, I've been working all morning to try to get the spreadsheet up to date. I think I'm pretty close right now. So I should have on, uh, I should have on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight broken wing butterflies. And I'm loving these trades, loving them. So let's see, do I have any that say zero days left? Uh, days left in trade, two? No, nope, none of them show that I got zero days. So I think I'm pretty good. All right, so let's look at our equities really quick. Like, I think I got all of those on here. Uh, so we're down on most of our equity trades, that's fine. We've got till Friday, except for XSP, which I think it expires today because I didn't do that one right. Okay, so let's do XSP. We do need to manage it. It expires today. That's a short put deep in the money. Man, it's losing $342. Okay, so let's go to our basis tab. XSP, let's see how that entire trade is doing. Our trade says it's down 920. So this is our diagonal trade in XSP. So why don't we go to XSP and roll that little puppy out. So this is my calendar in XSP. And then we've got this expiring today. So we'd like to roll this out to at least Friday, May 21st, right? Let's see if we can roll this puppy. Change this to single. Wow, look at this. Now right, we're gonna roll it out some. So we're gonna, gotta click over here. Create rolling order, 423 put. And if we rolled it out to, oh God, y'all shut up. To the 21st of May, which is Friday, I think. Oh, yeah, I do. Then we can get a credit of 47 cents. Now, can I roll it out to the 422 and a half? No, I traded. 422 would be a debit. So I can't roll it out to the 422. I like rolling it out if I can, but we're just going to get that to the 423 and pull in an additional credit. Okay. Takes no more buying power. See so if we can get filled. Cancel replace. What if we only got a credit of 45 cents? Wow, look at that. The mid and the nat price are really off. So we'll try to get filled here. We want to bring in a credit. Keep the dream alive. There we go. 
So we're filled at 46 cents. All right, so let's record that trade, okay? So we got a field to close it at 756. I am not letting my spreadsheet get behind again, even though if I say we're in a hurry, we're just gonna do it. So we got 756. What does that say? Oh, here, 756. XSP. Oh, we got a good field compared to that, right? If we got filled at 756, 56. Natalie, we take this out because it slows down our little spreadsheet, but we'll go through that when you and I do our one-on-one -on -one together. Uh, XSP. So we're going to take a little bit of a loss on this one. Uh, 1721 is when we closed it. So we lost $229 there. Call it other. <clears throat> other just means Bobby's a dork kid and just lost money. All right, so we'll mark this red. Period. All right, so then we sold out another XSP. So we'll go XSP, we'll go one. We kept the same 423 put, short put. We entered this trade, let's say it's four days to expiration. Entered it on the 17th. And we got a price, what do we get for it? $8.02, sweet. Keeping the dream alive, $8.02. We brought in a big old credit there. All right, let me go snag the information for that one, four days out. So, Stacy, did I say Natalie? Want to go, Stacy? We will go in. We go and snag it. It's an eighty-seven delta. Just right-click anywhere on here, so that our spreadsheet can keep up with the price. Control. C, control V for Vaseline. And there. And the delta on that was, what was it? It was a 87. Beautiful. All right, so we did our work there. So now let's go to our micros trade. All right, so this is a campaign we're in. I think I got this all worked out. So we're gonna take our profits on the highest profitable one. And that is the 3780 put. We're gonna take our $20 and run to the house. 3780, let's go close it. Monitor, that's an income trade, 3780. There she is, right click, close for 850. And we got filled. Show it, show it, 850. So we take our option name out and we have to manually put in our current day price, 850. So we made 32% profit on that, 32%. We got out of it today, tax day. And we'll call that 30% profit since we got just over 30% profit in that one. 
Hey, Bobby, I heard you were good on taxes, man. That's why I ain't going to Piggly Wiggly today. My nephew just dropped his uh, his W-2 die. I don't have nothing else. I, I Just his W-2. And I'm like, dude, you're killing Uncle Bobby. All right, so we close that. Now let's look at our Greeks. What are how are our Greeks today? So if you've got everything grouped, you got to ungroup them because it won't show you the totals at the bottom. So we take the groups off. Let me close up all this. Look at this, y'all. That is perfect, is it not? I mean, we are delta neutral and positive theta, positive vega. Doesn't get much better, but I like, you know, I like throwing out another micro trade. So that'll mess this up a little bit. So let's do, let's see what it's telling us to sell. We'll sell another one, close one, sell one, close one, sell one. So we're Johnny one lots here. And it's gonna say, hey, Bob, you need to do a 15 Delta, recommended Delta. Okay. So where do you go? Well, we go closest to 60 days without going over. Well, dang, if we ain't got a 60 day. <coughs> and then we'll go to the 15% probability of being in the money. Not right there. We'll right click to get that posted into our spreadsheet and sell it. 30.25 and we're filled at 30.25. 60 days out. Let's go record it. Control V for Venezuela. So it's a 36.60 put. What strategy are we doing? A short put strategy because we hate selling calls. I'll take calls out of there. It recommended a 15. We behaved. We went out to 60 day TEs. And 5, 17, 21. And we did it for, what was it? Uh, 30, 25. Brought us in a nice little credit of $149. All right, now let's look at our Greeks. That made us a little more positive, didn't it? That ain't no problem, because what we're going to do is we're going to do a adjustment by buying a broken wing butterfly to give us negative deltas. All right, so let's do it. We know the game. The game is easy. Let's go to SPX. Pick us up some negative deltas. So we're positive 10, right? Positive 10. Let's get us some negative. So where am I going to go? I like going out between 10, 14 days, right? But I've already got positions in all of these. Now, the cool thing is I could do like Ken does and do a, you know, the bat wings, right? So if I got puts in one of these, I could do calls in the other, blah, blah, blah. But I just kind of been like going out to the next expiration and do one like 25 days out. So we need negative deltas. So that means we're going to buy a call broken wing butterfly. So how do you do that? Well, here's my comfort area, right? I like going to the 30 delta. I don't use delta on anything but dicks. So I go out and I go 30% um, probability of moving money and that's where I'm gonna sell. So I'm going to sell this one. And we've got to sell two of those, right? If we're doing a broken wing butterfly. All right. So we're selling two of the 4225s. So then what does that mean? 4225. So that means I've got to buy one closer to the money. So that means I'm going to buy the 4220. Oh, crap. I didn't hit my control key. And we're going to sell the 4225. You got to hold your control key. And then we'll make this one, call it custom. So we can sell two of these. There we go. 
So we sell two of these, 42, 25, and then we gotta go two strikes out to make it broken right? instead of one strike out. So 42, 25, uh, I don't know, 42, 25, and the name, 42, 25. So I gotta go to 42, 35. 42, 35. Now, we've got a little butterfly. So we're selling the 4225, buying one of the closer to the money, and then we're doing um, buying one two strikes away farther from the money. And you can get it for a dollar eighty-five, dollar ninety-five credit, which is really good. And it doesn't take that much buying power, right? So you got a smaller account, it's taking up $317 in buying power. Beautiful. Now let's analyze the trade so that everybody understands why we're doing a call, broken wing butterfly. So you right click on this puppy and you go analyze trade. Brings us to the analysis trade and we want to click down here till we wanna hide our positions, hide positions so that it only shows the simulations. And let's delete this calendar out. Make sure you've only got that one little butterfly showing. Let's see. Looks like we do, but let's just double check. Yep, we only got one little trade down here. Very cool, very groovy. Bobby's tax service, please hold. Someone's calling. Hey, Bobby, this is your uncle. I know it's a... Uh, Short notice, but anyway, you might can do my taxes today. Hell, it just got away from me. No, I ain't answering the phone today. So this is our broken wing butterfly. Beautiful, right? So here's at the money right now. We sold two here, right? So really, ultimately, you would like for price to go up to the short strikes that I just sold. Uh, at expiration. If it goes there too quickly, you're going to be losing a little bit of money. But check this out. If price goes down and we have a crash, man, you just you keep your little profit. So let's look at the price slices to see what kind of Greeks this, this is going to give us. And you'll see that at current price, it's going to give us negative 1.34 SPX deltas. So that means it's going to give us negative 13 SPY deltas, gives us a little bit of positive theta, and it gives us a little negative vega. $500 buying power effect, less the credit received. So that's why it's, you know, you're receiving $185. So what, it's taking $315 in buying power. Beautiful little trade. All right, so... Let's see if this indeed gets us back to Delta neutral. I love doing this with the broken wing butterflies. All right, so let's go, let's see if that price has moved around a little bit. Right click, uh, confirm and send. Let's get filled. Only problem is we gotta work it a little bit a lot of times, so. May have to get a little bit less credit. Hey, Bob, you may not know me. I'm getting your study school class. Oh, me. Come here, little baby. There we go. So let's work it down a nickel or a dime. So we can get feel. Dollar eighty-five, no takers. Would you do it for a dollar seventy-five? Somebody out there. Yes, so hell, I'm back on my uh, recordings too. I'm back to. I'm, I'm going to post those. Absolutely. I'll try to do that today. Hey, we got feel, baby. Look at this. All right. Well, it looks like we got filled at a dollar eighty. All right, so let me record this. Let's go back to the trade tab. 
And I right click here on my short strike. So let's go record it. Cause a lot of times I know I think I think to y'all, man, this has got to be bored, and then I don't do it, and then I get behind. I cannot get behind SPX one. So this is the forty two twenty. 4225, 4235 calls. As much as I hate calls, we'll do a broken wing butterfly. So the short strike is the 4225. And I like going and posting that there. Control V for vaccine. Then what I do is I change this to butterfly. And then I right click on the short strike again, but this gives me a butterfly, right? So I copy it and hit Control V for Venus, Control V. But then I have to change the strikes up a little. So I go 4235 here, change that to 4235, again. And we'll call this a broken wing butterfly. Sweet little high probability trade, y'all. And we went out 25 days. Yep, 25 days. We entered it today, 5, 17, 21. 25 days left in that. We got a sweet, sweet credit of $1.80. You have to manually enter the credit because of their stupid price system. So it, we got a credit of 170.48. Beautiful. Now let's go, while we're doing everything, let's put her into our group. So we got to group it, right? So, Show groups. I say, I say show groups. There we go. So what's my highest? 25, right? I think I got a 25 out there. So unallocated is, what's this? Oh yeah, we sold that while ago. So we need to put that in our hedge. We'll send you to the hedge. Gotta remember to group everything, right? Okay, so we're grouping that. Uh, SPX, there you are. So we're gonna send you to BS, not BSH, but uh, I'll send you to Butterfly 26. Butter. You know, when I was in economics classes in undergraduate school, we would have these guns and butter discussions, supply and demand. I bet they can't do that anymore. Because that's politically incorrect. <gasps> we can't talk about guns, Bob, because somebody may blow up the economics class. Oh, gotcha. yeah, that, those two words came from Hitler. What? The, the, really? Yeah. Well, God knows we can't mention it then. Mm -hmm. That is weird. I remember, but I remember doing that. You know, we would always talk about. So I'm going to move my little micros trade to my income trade, right? There we go. Now, everything should be in its little place. So the cool thing, when you have everything over here uh, in groups, then you can go to your analyze tab and analyze anything, right? So um, let's see, let's move this to spy. 
just in case you worry and you do about you re being repetitive, mm -hmm. I've learned three things just in the last five minutes on how to use toss. Really? Yeah. Okay. And I learned how to enter a broken wing butterfly into your spreadsheet. Okay, good. There's a lot of mysteries in there for me. I still yeah. haven't been able to implement your spreadsheet. I'm still working on it. Well, and you're one of those you want to, you know, you're you want to actually understand and go, you know, dig in. So I totally get that. Yeah, I'm a, I'm an engineer by trade, profession and training and temperament. Is I got I I I can't use it till I take it apart, and put it back together again. I, it's it's just it's a cross after bear. Yeah, because a lot of times I do, you know, I'm always worried about, hey, I do the same thing every day. So I appreciate that, Ken. You know, repetition, what's what's the thing about repetition is the, what's the saying? Come here, Bob. Here we go. So you can start looking at your, you know, different things right here. My butterfly 19, looking good, no problem. Uh, you can go, how does old butterfly 20 look or 21 look? Butterfly 20, let's pull him up. Boy, he looks good too, right? He's on the put side. How's Butterfly 21 look? But you can only do this if you've got them grouped, right? Uh, unless you go through and uh, just click the strikes that you have for that broken wing butterfly. This is the easy way to do it. So Butterfly, you got a Butterfly 22 in there somewhere? Or are we closed him? Butterfly. Butterfly 16, did I do that one yet? Butterfly 16. So you can go through and look at your entire, you know, thing. Now, if you want to see what everything looks like on your single symbol with your SPX traits, what is your overall thing? Let's see if we can look at everything. Uh, all groups. This ought to be interesting. Let's do several expirations, four expirations. So you start looking at all your trades, right? Look at this. You got all these little mountains. So it looks like I'm really sitting good if the market were to drop, right? Look at this. If it drops here, I could, you know, be up $5,000 right up to there. It's kind of fun to play with. There's all kinds of different things you can do here. So we've got our, so Bobby, are you using these broken wing butterflies to replace your previous Cameron Skinner trades to adjust deltas? Yes. Very, very good question, Stacy. Uh, because what happened is, is there were a couple things that we like doing. We like doing the Rick trade, which was a Monday, Wednesday, Friday trade that expired the next, you know, expiration. And we were doing those credit spreads. The only problem is I'd have to go 20, not strike, yeah, 20, you know, points wide in those. So it was taking me $2,000 of buying power every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I was like, that's a lot of buying power. Let's, let's cut that down some. And then I was doing the Cameron Skinner trade, doing it every day, right? Every day, putting one on. But man, I was, you know, that was taking up $1,000 of buying power. So 5,000 a week, so 20,000 a month. And I was like, that's just too much for me, for this account. So if you've got a larger account, you can do those credit spreads. And, you know, you can do the uh, RIT trade the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, even with a smaller account. But I was just like, it's taking up too much buying power. So what we did as a group is we kind of came up with these broken wing butterflies to do daily delta adjustments. And it worked out really, really well. And, it, and each one of these only take 5,000, I mean, about $500 of buying power. So it worked out really, really nice. Uh, it, it just didn't allow us to use as much buying power. So now let's see what our, deltas are. We should be really groovy today. Let's see what we're doing. Okay, look at this, y'all. 
So it did exactly what we needed it to do. Remember a while ago when I showed you all my SPX trades, you remember where the profit hump was? We know we were negative deltas because of where that profit hump was down here on the, the lower side, right? And indeed, we've got negative 101 deltas there. So we're looking really good. And how much better can I get, y'all? So, uh, Stacy, let me talk to you a second. Uh, you know, if you are and have been, and I'll know more about your trading journey right when we, we get together, but you probably have already been selling options. And the majority of people who sell options uh, may try to be negative delta if you're following tasty trade method, right? I don't do that. I try to be delta neutral with just a couple of negative deltas. I don't need a lot. And we beta weight everything to spy. So we're all talking apples to apples. So we're short just a little deltas. We're always positive theta. And we try to keep Vega in control. Vega is what hurts us, y'all. Oh my gosh. You've never experienced uh, being killed by Vega until volatility explodes. And that's where I've lost Teslas in a day on volatility explosions. So that's what we try to do. Just, you know, keep everything. So what we're doing is Theta is our bank robber. You and I, a kid and Stacy and Dwayne and Matt, we're going to go rob a bank. Theta is the one who's going to go up to the teller and say, give me all your money. That's Theta's job. Vega is the driver of the getaway car. Got to keep it smooth. Got to keep everything in control, right? Delta is the rest of us that are in there who are trying to keep everybody calm on the floor, the security officer from pulling his gun at us. So Theta really has a simple job. Theta's job is to collect the money. So what you and I have to then do is neutralize the bank robbing situation with Delta and Vega so that Theta can do his job because Theta cannot work if Delta is too far out of line. So if, you know, Theta is at the window collecting the money and the officer inside has just pulled his gun and now he's, you know, pointing it at Theta, well, Theta can't concentrate. If the SWAT team is outside and they've got our, uh, they've got our getaway car surrounded and Vega is off, Theta, it doesn't matter. Theta's not going to be able to collect the money and we're going to get to keep it because our Vega is off. So if you're going to have the perfect bank robbery, I probably should have come up with something in a, in a legal sense instead of something illegal. Because we're not doing anything illegal. This but is I think very it, exciting. It is exciting, right? So how in the world is Theta going to get the money from the teller and to be able to concentrate and make sure there's no unmarked bills and that there's no die uh, explosive placed in the bag if Theta's having to worry about the SWAT team outside with our getaway car and having to worry about the officer that's now pulled his gun and is pointing it at us. Or there's a hero, you know, that's got a gun uh, on the floor that's, that's about to pop us. Theta can't do his job. So it's a balancing act, y'all. If you want Theta to come into the account, you got to negate these two. These two is what will keep you from collecting theta. So that is an important concept. And, you know, explained in a strange, strange way, I get it. But uh, that's why we do that. That's why you don't want these to be pos too positive or too negative. You want to keep it just neutral. You just want everybody laying on the floor flat. They're flat on the floor. No heroes standing up, no guards standing up. Everybody's flat, 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 flat. You want to make sure that the Joe Biden gas scare 
you know, because we don't need pipelines in this country. So you want to make sure that, hey, we got more than an eighth of a tank of gas in the get up in the in the car here, right? Because if you're negative 200 here, well, that's dangerous to you. That means you don't have enough gas in your tank to, for the getaway car to get away. We got to do this quickly because we don't want the SWAT team surrounding the getaway car. So these are three, re, re, re. I saw something the other day that kind of illustrated it, right? So, you know, uh, what's another illustration? You're Dwayne the the Rock Johnson right here, baby. This is this is Dwayne the Rock Johnson, and he's doing all his move. He's doing all his stuff, and he's the strong man, right? So do your job, baby. Act, and then you got you got Arnold Schwarzenegger over here, right? Keeping everything at bay, and then you got Lou Ferrigno, the Incredible Hulk, over here. You know, and they're all doing their thing. They all making this a nice, pleasant experience. So when I go to bed tonight, I don't worry about a crash because I got a little bit of negative delta and I'm positive Vegas. So the volatility explosion is not going to kill me. Now, I still may be down money. That doesn't mean we're not going to be down money. But all we got to do then is, you know, hero stood up. So we got to go and take the back of our gun and we got to crack him over the head and take his gun away from him. And we got to neutralize him. So SWAT team shows up and surrounds our car, right? Well, that's no problem because we've been digging a tunnel under the car and uh, or we jump in, our, our getaway guy, he jumps into the sewer and we've got yet a plan B with another getaway car, you know, that they don't know where he's going to come out of the sewer at to get it. So that's all that we're doing. This is our money. This is money. It don't matter if you got a fast getaway car, if you don't have theta, you're not gonna collect it. And it doesn't matter how flat your deltas are if you don't have theta. We've just got to allow our little theta guy to do his job. And this means, what does theta mean? So this means that on average, I should be pulling in $285 into my account each and every day. I wish I could show y'all this in a portfolio, but I don't think I can. Hold on a second. So if I go here and I go spy and I go, uh, I don't think it'll show me the whole portfolio. Hide simulations. Will it if I take the gold out, maybe? Yeah, so here it is. It'll show it. If you put gold in there, my gold trade, it, 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 it's like, Bobby, you've confused me. So right now, it says my theta is 268, right? So what happens when you move this day? So right now, it says profit and loss on the day, I've made $618, right? Here's my profit and loss on my open. We know we've got a lot. So what's what happens if I go up a day? I should collect my 268 and theta. So let's move this a day four. Boom. Now you're up $884. So tomorrow, if everything stayed the same, my theta is 308, which means that if I go up one day, then this should be, what, 1100 and something dollars, almost $1,200. Should be $1,200. So if everything stays constant, now my theta is $345. So now I'm going to be up 15 55, 1595, right? So you can kind of go through here and go, well, where will I be by Friday? So Friday's the 21st. So if all stays the same, I should have gone from being up 600 to being up uh, 1800 in just the next couple of days. If we stay at price right here, and if this happens, and if this happens, but that doesn't happen, right? This is a perfect world. This is the money heist I've been watching on uh, Netflix. I think that's why I'm talking about bank robbers, right? So everything, all, things always go wrong. So volatility increases and decreases and does everything. And 
we're trying to negate that so that this can do what we're doing. So what about weekend theta? Boom. There you go. You should be at 2,300. Boom. You should be at 2,500. But now some of our trades have popped off, right? They're, you saw them. They're, they're no longer here. So your theta goes down. But what were we doing in the meantime? We're selling more premium and collecting more theta to keep that up. So then you see you start going out by days and, you know, it uh, shows you what should happen. Right? You're going up that amount of theta every day. So it's an awesome little, you know, uh, way of visualizing your account. You can go to your calendar. You know, you can say, what are we going to do at the end of the month if I don't make another trade? Okay, we're up 38.95, uh -huh. and we're only down 53.60 on our open trades because you've had a lot of those trades to close. So it's really a great way of visualizing where you should be if you do a good job of taking care of Delta and Vega because Theta is king, but Theta cannot do its job if we don't keep these neutralized. So now you wake up and maybe for the first time you go, oh my gosh, I finally get it. So bank robber with a bag cannot do his job alone. We need each other. We can't just go in and, you know, you know, because next thing you know, your car is blocked out on that side. You've got to have that person on the outside. You've got to have the help of Vega. Positive Vega if possible or control negative Vega. Most people, Stacy, who come in and sell options are huge negative Vega, not us. We have found a way to make this positive or at least to neutralize it. Sashnoff and the team are huge negative Delta. Well, that's why Sashnoff, as Beth says, lost over a million dollars last year in a trade account. We didn't lose a million dollars. We were not too far negative. We're not too far negative. Just a tad, just a teeny tiny. Actually, if this was negative one, I'd be so happy. Negative one. Now, <coughs> what happens? Market goes down tomorrow. What happens to my deltas? They go up. I think Dwayne discovered that big the other day. He's like, wait a minute, this is a paradox. He goes, the market goes down. You'd think I'd be selling puts to get positive delta, but no. When the market goes down, my delta goes up. So that means I've got to get negative delta. Yeah. Market goes up. This gets shorter, right? It gets smaller negative or larger negative. So you may be negative 100. So then you got to get positive delta. And it's strange and it's weird and it's, you know, <clears throat> and it's hard. It's hard to, you know, sell calls on a down day. It's hard to sell puts on an up day. So we don't sell calls. I did. I do occasionally. But now we're able to make little bitty adjustments by closing existing trades or opening new trades. And that's all this is. All right. So, uh... Ken, I have in the toss account delta of negative 2.4, theta 50, and vega of negative 20. Seems my vega is relatively imbalanced. Yeah, you know, but here's the thing. A negative 28 vega, that ain't bad. That really ain't bad. Considering that most of the time, if I was in this account and, you know, uh, I was just selling options and not trying to hedge that, I'd be negative two or 300 Vega. So the Shoshnoff and Tasty Trade thing is this. You need to be one half of your deltas to your Vegas, okay? So you're gonna have negative Delta and negative Vega if you're a Tasty Trader. Say so that again, you, okay. one yeah. half deltas? Yep, so, so in other words, this is a, a, a ratio of one to two. So if you have negative 10 deltas, you should have negative 20 Vega. I got to think about that and make sure I'm saying it right, right? Because y'all know how my mind gets all crusty. 
but yeah, that's basically how they did it. And uh, that, you know, that's that's their little formula for delta to vega. If you're negative 100 deltas, don't have more than negative 200 vegas. So it's not one half deltas, it's two times the deltas equals the vega. Yeah, yeah, one to two, right? One to two. So let me say it again. If you have negative 200 deltas, try not to have more than negative 400 vega. But I'm gonna tell you this, Ken, and that's with me trading that and trying to do that, it still stings when the market goes down. Well, that's I why spanked, I, yeah. I got spanked the other day by having, I woke up to a serious imbalance of vega to deltas and I, I, I went to the woodshed that day. And uh, that's what I've been watching Vegas a lot more. I've sort of, I'm feeling like in football, I'm hearing footsteps, you know. So, now, okay. now, let's say, Ken, that you want to wake up today and you want to put in a uh, more positive Vega, right? Let's yeah. make sure everybody knows how to do that. Well, you can do a calendar spread, right? So a calendar, hold on a second, let me show you. I did this calendar in SPX. Let's see what it does. Calendar gave me negative deltas. And look at this. Can you imagine if I didn't have this on? Why did I put this trade on? Because I needed that positive Vega. Now say you don't need 248, do it in a smaller product. So let's go to my calendar two, which is in XSP. That gives me, uh, you know, positive uh, 22 Vegas and negative Delta, but still gives you positive Vega. So all you got to do, Ken, is if you wanted, you know, to negate that, you could go put a calendar on. So go out about 60 days yeah. and buy around a 40 Delta put. Then go out about 30 days and sell that same put. Right? And that will give you a trade that will give you the positive Vega that you need. And also it doesn't kill your theta, right? It gives you positive theta and a little bit of negative Delta. Now, what about if you wanted to do this on the call side? Well, Let me repeat that. You go out 60 days, get a 40 Delta put, and then uh, go get a 30 day, uh, sell a 30 day put at the same strike. Yep. So okay. you could do this on SPY, you could do it on XSP, uh, you could do it on diamonds, you could do it on, you know, anything. So let's do uh, XSP. Let's just work it out so we can see it, what it looks like. Make sure everybody knows exactly what, because that's what you got to do, right? Every day is a Delta adjustment and a Vega adjustment and, you know, making sure you get the Delta that you need. Okay, that's XSP. Hold on a second, y'all. Let's make sure everybody knows this. XSP, if I never find it, do not say it's XSP. If you're unfamiliar with this, this is a 1256 tax product. It's a mini SPX index. It's roughly the same thing as SPY, not quite the liquidity, but the liquidity is good enough for me. So what you would do is you probably go out to the, you know, 32 day, 28 day, and let's change this to single. And I would go find a put that has a 40% probability of being in the money. Why, Bobby, do I do 40%? I'm a creature of habit. I've been taught by Theo Trade. I've been taught by Tasty Trade. I've been taught by, you know, uh, who else? So many people. But I take this one from Tasty Trade. So I'd go here. And I would buy the 409. 40% probability of being in the money. By the 409. Then we go out to about 30 days. You know, wait a minute. Hold on. 60 days first, Bob. You goofy butt. Hold on. 60 days. Here we go. Sorry, Ken. I messed it up. Go to 60 days first. So go out to your longer dated one first and find it. 40 percent probability of any money. Oh, it's been a long time. So that's the 406, right? So I'm going to buy the 406. Now we go to 30 days. And we're going to sell the 406. Go out to about 30 days. You know, 32, 28, either one. 
keep your control key down when you do this and you're gonna sell the one that same strike to 406. Control key down, sell. So that gives you a little calendar right there, right? So it's gonna cost you 322 bucks. So let's right click on it and let's analyze the trade so that you see what it looks like. Okay, XSP, we're going to hide our positions. And let me take this off. Let me take this off. Wait a minute, all series. Hold on a second, high positions, all groups, no, single symbol. Single symbol. Okay, so there's our calendar trade right there. Make sure I got nothing else in it. Yep, 323 debit. So that's going to give you negative six deltas, positive theta, positive theta. Cool. Isn't that cool? And think, in, think you can do that in SPY. You can do it in diamonds. You can do it in IWM, QQQs. Uh, either of those, you know, just try to figure out the... Uh, that and you know get get all your stuff in order so that's all we're doing y'all so so what do we do and we'll introduce stacy to our four things that we do we sell options that's what we do that's our that's our that's our thing we we do sell premium right we we sell premium we sell options we bring in the theta all right that, and, that had negative uh that had negative uh, Vega, right? Positive Vega. Oh, okay. So that's what I need. <laughs> oh. See it right there, Ken? It's positive yeah. Vega. Positive Vega, okay. Uh-huh. And it gives you positive theta, even, which is nice, right? So you should be making $5 a day on that trade. And it gives you a little bit of short delta. So, you know, think about it every day. We sell premium with the odds in our favor. We manage risk. Mm. And we... Uh, Ritz and repeat. Now, Dwayne, I think, brought up an interesting point too. Let's look at VIX. If you, another thing is we do the VIX hedge as well, right? So we do the VIX hedge. It is now today at 120 days. I do think it was Dwayne that told us that, reminded us that VIX. So <clears throat> another thing you could do is to put on your VIX hedge today. I've only got one day left in this. Uh, you know, VIX is up, what, $2 in a, in a nickel today. So I like to do it on days when VIX has gone down, you know, rather than up. So, but here you go, you know, you could, what is 0.0025% of your account and buy a call. Uh, so let's say the 10 Delta call, I actually do use Deltas here. So what if you bought this call today as part of your VIX hedge? Why don't we right click on it and analyze this trade, see what it does. So you're buying your VIX call, single symbol, hide positions, there it is, right? What does this do for you? Well, this gives you positive deltas if you need them, positive gamma, we don't keep up with gamma, gives you a little bit of negative theta and gives you a little bit of positive vega. So it may be helpful y'all for y'all to start getting into the habit uh, before you place in a trade, analyze it. You know, look at what the Greeks are going to do. Uh, and, you know, maybe I need to do that more with you guys so that you're, you know, when you're coming in, what it's going to do for you. So if you needed positive deltas today, I don't. Uh, if you need positive Vega, today's a great day to put it on. I am going to wait for a day when I see, you know, volatility, the VIX go down probably before I do this. And I don't have to have it today because I'm in really good shape. I'm right where I need to be. I've got great theta. I'm positive to neutral vega. And I'm just going to let theta go up to the teller and get the money. All right. Would a call calendar give negative vega? Uh, no. A call calendar would... Well, I say no. I don't know if I've ever done a call calendar, but I'm thinking 
let's just think it through here. I think a call calendar would give you uh, I'll work it out. Yeah. Okay, we'll we'll try to do it tomorrow, but I think here's what it's going to do. So whereas the uh, put one gives you negative deltas and positive theta and positive vega, I think the call is going to give us a positive delta, positive theta, and positive vega. But we'll try it out tomorrow. Like I say, that's just on the, the, the you know, I'm just thinking about it, right? I'm just thinking about it, but I think that's what it would do for us. But we'll try to plot one on tomorrow, make sure we're right on that. I'd hate to tell y'all wrong for sure. All right, good group today. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Stacy. Uh, hope we didn't blow your head up today on the first day. Uh, we need to, if you'll kind of let me know when you're available this week, uh, send me a message and we will uh, work out a one-on-one -on -one so we can get you up to date and going with the spreadsheet. So with